Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, I get asked uh, the same questions uh, over and over again. Um, so I thought I would take uh, the three most common questions that I get asked and just do a, a, a brief question and answer uh, video so that uh, I don't have to keep uh, ans answering the same questions and I can refer people to this video. Um, I get asked a lot, uh, My most the, the, the most commonly asked question is, uh, what's the best way to lose weight? Um, well, first of all, you have to differentiate between losing weight and losing body fat. Really what we want to do, uh, I assume most people that say they want to lose weight, they actually want to lose body fat. Um, what's the best way to lose body fat? Uh, I don't believe there is a best way of losing body fat. Uh, it will really depend on who the person is. Uh, but we can make some generalizations. Uh, the best thing that you can do if you want to try and lose body fat uh, is to clean your diet up, to make sure that you eat high quality foods. Generally people get fat because they eat the wrong types of foods and people know this. They eat cakes, they eat biscuits, they eat sugar uh, and they eat trans fats and all the processed foods that they know they shouldn't eat uh, and this is what causes people to get fat. So really it's common sense that if you want to lose that weight uh, you have to reverse your dietary uh, practices. Uh, those habits that you've, those bad habits that you've picked up throughout your life that have caused you to gain weight, you have to reverse them and it's not going to be something that can happen in six months. Uh, and really you have to think uh, of this clean diet, this high quality diet, something you need to eat for the rest of your life because obviously you can lose some uh, body fat through eating high quality foods but then if you go back to your old uh, typical western diet with all the the processed foods and all the sugar uh, you're going to put the weight back on again and it's probably going to come back on more quickly than it did the first time as well so really those uh, the, the advice i would give those people that want to lose body fat is really to look at your diet uh, be honest with yourself uh, and, and look at the look at the foods that you're eating uh, and try and substitute the the poor quality foods with high quality foods so that means you need to eat whole grain foods instead of refined starches uh, you need to cut out uh, metabolic poisons like sugar and trans fats and oxidized fats uh, you need to base your, uh, your 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 food your diet plan on plant foods uh, you need to cut down on red meat, so perhaps you only have red meat once a week. You need to eat more fish, you need to eat more essential fatty acids, and you need to make sure that you have all the nutrients you require to be able to produce a healthy body and to have your biochemistry working correctly. Really, there is no uh, a secret to, to, to fat loss. It's really just eating healthy foods. You don't even need to uh, consciously cut your calories. Once you eat healthy foods, your body will naturally find its uh, its level in terms of its calorie intake, and you'll you'll find that your appetite uh, and your satiety uh, regulatory mechanisms work correctly, and you won't overeat, and therefore you, you you'll you'll lose the weight, and then you'll maintain your normal genetically. Uh, 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 determined body weight so that's the best advice I can give to anyone unless unless obviously you work with someone closely it's very difficult to give specifics but that's a general uh, bit of advice make sure your diet's clean um, and make sure that you eat uh, high quality foods whether that's high a high high carbohydrate diet or high protein diet high fat diet that depends on the person everybody has different biochemistry and you need to find what works for yourself Another question I get asked a lot uh, is what supplements you should take. Again, this is very dependent on the person that you're talking about. Everybody has different biochemistries uh, and everybody has a different need for nutrients. Uh, and it's very difficult, therefore, to uh, recommend uh, supplements for individuals. And certain people have certain health conditions they require certain supplements for. But we can make some uh, generalizations. And so this is general advice again. Uh, I would suggest that everybody needs to take a high quality multivitamin and mineral supplement because I don't believe that you can get all the nutrients you require in your food. Uh, this has not always been the case. We used to eat very high quality uh, uh, foods that were grown on very uh, mineral rich soils. And there was uh, most of it was locally grown uh, and there was a very uh, much higher vitamin and mineral content in most of the foods that we ate. Uh, this is not the case now. We tend to eat foods that have come from a long way away. Uh, we tend to eat foods that have been stored for a long time. Uh, we tend to eat foods that have been grown on mineral poor soils. Uh, and, and most people tend to eat processed foods that have had most of the vitamin and mineral content removed anyway. Um, 
But even if you do eat a very high quality diet, I still don't believe that you can get all of the nutrients you require in your food, particularly the minerals, and therefore uh, I would take a multivitamin and mineral uh, tablet. I'd recommend that for, for everybody, including children. You can get special children's multivitamin and mineral tablets, and I think uh, starting at a young age is a good habit to get into. Um, on top of a multivitamin and mineral, um, I would suggest that everybody needs to take uh, vitamin D uh, when they ha don't have access to uh, strong sunlight. So in uh, higher latitude um, regions, uh, that will be uh, obviously in the winter months. Um, so I live in the United Kingdom. Um, so from about, uh, well really the weather's pretty bad at the moment, so from about now, uh, unless, the, unless the sun comes out again, uh, certainly from, from late September most years, all the way through uh, to spring, really you need to take uh, a vitamin D supplement because you don't, uh, you don't have a strong enough sunlight uh, in the United Kingdom to be able to, to endogenously, endogenously synthesize vitamin D uh, in your skin. Um, obviously if you live in hotter areas but you don't go into the sun uh, that would also be a consideration so really you judge how much vitamin D you need in a supplement based on how often you go in the sun if you go out in the sun it's warm you get sun on your skin uh, you only have to be out for about 10 minutes uh, and you'll be able to produce all the vitamin uh, D you need but if you don't go out obviously you can't do that so you need a supplement um, on top of vitamin D, uh, you need to have a look at your multivitamin and mineral tablet. And if you're not getting 200 micrograms of selenium uh, in your uh, multivitamin tablet, you need to take a selenium tablet to be able to take, you want about 200 micrograms per day of selenium um, in, your, in, your, in your supplement um, tablets. So uh, if you only have 100 in your multivitamin, you need to take a supplement, I suggest, of 100 to be able to get a total of 200 micrograms per day. And the reason selenium is particularly important is because uh, it's required for uh, particularly the enzyme uh, glutathione peroxidase um, and it's uh, been shown that those people with lower levels of selenium uh, in their tissues have higher uh, rates of uh, higher risk of, uh, of getting cancer. Um, and supplementing with selenium reduces your risk of getting cancer uh, and our foods are devoid of selenium. Some countries have particularly poor selenium soils. Uh, New Zealand is one example. Uh, there are areas of China as well that have particularly poor uh, selenium soils. And If you're getting your, uh, your food from those soils you're going to have a deficiency of selenium and that's going to increase your risk of getting cancer. So selenium is important uh, to maintain uh, at a, an intake of about 200 micrograms a day. And then on top of that, whatever else you get in your food as well. Um, those, are the, those are the three supplements I would recommend most people to take uh, as, a, as a general guide. On top of that, I could probably put a good argument together for some other supplements. I think vitamin C uh, is something else that people should take as a supplement. Uh, you can get probably enough vitamin C in your diet if you eat a very high fruit and vegetable diet um, but you know everyone has different requirements and if you're stressed uh, if you if you live in a very high stress environment you may not be getting enough vitamin C you need more vitamin C in your diet if you are uh, exposed to stress uh, and therefore uh, it's very cheap insurance just to take a vitamin C tablet every day just to make sure that you're getting enough and it won't do you any harm uh, it, you know it's not going to do any, any any it's not going to cause any problems so it's so cheap uh, it's worthwhile considering vitamin C uh, and vitamin E, vitamin E is a, an interesting one. Um, you can get vitamin E in your diet if you eat nuts and seeds. Uh, vitamin E tends to be concentrated uh, in the um, in plant foods where there are polyunsaturated fats. The plants use the vitamin E to protect the polyunsaturated fats. So nuts and seeds uh, have polyunsaturated fats uh, and other fatty acids that are protected by the vitamin E. So you can get good intakes of vitamin E if you have a diet high uh, in those types of food. Um, but really, if we look at the scientific uh, literature that's been done, uh, that's been the scientific studies that have been uh, published on vitamin E, um, we probably don't get enough vitamin E uh, in our diet for optimal health. Um, 
really if you take vitamin E as a supplement you should take a mixed tocopherol supplement there are there are eight isomers of vitamin E there are four tocopherols and four tocotrienols they all have the same uh, vitamin E activity but they all have overlapping but slightly different functions and the best form of vitamin E is a one that contains all of those eight isomers if you can't find something that contains all of the eight isomers in, sometimes the tocotrienols are not included try and get a supplement that contains the four different uh, tocopherols which is alpha beta gamma and delta uh, you'll see a mixed tocopherol supplement uh, and vitamin E should always be really in the oil form um, and it should always be in the, in the D uh, alpha, the D uh, beta, the D gamma uh, and the D delta form of the uh, of the vitamin. Uh, and that I would really I would I think you could put a good argument together to say that you'd probably need to supplement vitamin E as well. So there, I'm rambling now, but those are the those are the um, those are the, uh, the the supplements I would suggest most people need to look at. Certainly, a multivitamin, certainly vitamin D, uh, certainly selenium, and then on top of that, I think you can argue that vitamin C and vitamin E are also important enough uh, not to risk uh, having deficiencies from your food because you can't really tell how much is in your food. Uh, you know that you need uh, a certain amount, so you might as well take a, a multivitamin uh, uh, and additional vitamins in order to make sure that you've got the minimum amount because it's not going to do you any harm if you take a little bit too much. Um, another question uh, I get asked quite a lot is what is the best way to train to cause uh, weight loss? Uh, and again, we have to qualify that and say we're actually talking about fat loss. Um, and again, it's very difficult to give, uh, to, to give recommendations because everybody's different. Uh, generally what I found is that those people that want to cause uh, fat loss, uh, the best way to cause fat loss is to build muscle uh, which builds and speeds your metabolic rate uh, and if on top of that you want to do uh, some aerobic exercise, some endurance type exercise, uh, that can actually speed uh, fat loss as well. Uh, the problem you find uh, is if you do too much endurance exercise you actually find that's catabolic uh, it causes too much stress on the body and that's actually detrimental to fat loss so really it's about balance uh, lifting weights resistance training builds muscle uh, and that will increase your metabolic rate which will increase the amount of calories that you can eat during uh, the day without gaining uh, body fat uh, the more muscle you have the more calories you need to maintain uh, that muscle um, and there is a fat burning effect obviously from endurance exercise so a mixture of the two tends to work quite well and I think this is what a lot of studies have shown uh, those people uh, who are put through a, 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 an exercise uh, protocol those people who do resistance training uh, lose body fat those people who do aerobic, uh, aerobic endurance type training lose body fat but if you combine the two you tend to lose more uh, body fat and you also maintain or, or gain uh, skeletal muscle as well uh, you don't tend to gain skeletal muscle if you just do aerobic or endurance training um, and you do tend to gain muscle but you don't burn so much fat uh, if you do just resistance training if I had to choose between resistance training and endurance training to lose body fat I would go with resistance training every single time uh, because you can actually get uh, an endurance workout from resistance training uh, if you take the weight if you're going to do something like deadlifts or squats you take the weight right down uh, you do 50 reps uh, you'll be working your cardiovascular system uh, uh, as, as strongly as you would if you went out for a run so resistance training is very uh, adaptive uh, you can do uh, very heavy weights with very few reps to build uh, to actually train your neuromuscular system you can do an intermediate amount of reps to train your uh, muscular system and cause hypertrophy and you can do very high reps uh, and actually get an endurance workout so resistance training is far more uh, flexible than uh, endurance aerobic style training so if I had to choose one and I had to recommend uh, one type of exercise I would say resistance training is the one to do uh, now obviously within aerobic uh, and um, uh, endurance type training there are many different forms you can do you can go running you can go on you can go cycling you can swimming and again the form you do will be the really the, the form of exercise you probably enjoy the most uh, I wouldn't ever recommend uh, one over the other because it depends on the individual preference uh, and 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 therefore you know there's no point doing something you don't enjoy if you really hate swimming uh, it's going to be very difficult to motivate yourself to go swimming every day so pick the exercise you enjoy you know maybe you enjoy playing tennis and which that's fine play tennis you know any exercise is good and I don't I think exercise for weight loss is overrated anyway and most weight loss comes from your diet um, 
exercise is needed for other things though exercise is needed for health it's needed for mental health it's needed to keep your joints mo uh, your flexibility it's, it's needed to keep your your joints flexible uh, and there are many reasons why exercise is good but i, I wouldn't put fat loss uh, high up on the on on that list uh, it certainly does cause uh, it does keep you lean it does keep you muscular it does keep your body composition uh, but I, I certainly wouldn't uh, turn to exercise as my first port of call if I wanted to lose to lose body fat. I would look at my diet. I think dietary uh, changes are much more uh, uh, much more closely associated with with changes in body composition than than what than the exercise that you do. Um, so there's three questions uh, that I've answered. I get asked those questions quite a lot. If you have any more questions, obviously, if you leave them uh, in the comments box below this video or in, a, in the comments box uh, below any of my other videos or email me or you can email me through my through my uh, my blog as well, uh, www.robertbarrington.net. Uh, and if you leave, if you ask me a question, I will uh, try to get back to you uh, as always do. Uh, and if I get uh, a certain amount of questions on a certain topic, I'll maybe do another of these uh, question and answer videos again in the future so i hope that was helpful uh, i'll see you next time for another video uh, and if you have any more uh, questions please just leave them in the comments box below